Hi everyone, welcome back to Patchy Pony Stitcher. It's when Thursday the 26th of July and it's lambing time. It's so exciting going out each morning and each afternoon checking for new lambs. It's one of my favorite times of the year seeing those gorgeous little lambs running around. In the video, you saw our first set of twins. Lots more to come, hopefully. That's just a snippet of a few of our lambs and our ewes. Now you might be wondering why one had a little bit of extra fluff on its back. Well, those breedings are self-shedding lambs. So they, sorry, self-shedding sheep. So they actually drop their wool themselves. They don't require any shearing. So that particular sheep that you saw with the woolly back just hasn't dropped its, its uh, wool off the back. So she gets a little bit of extra warmth during the winter. So it's been a little while since I've been. The kids are back, at, back to school, thank goodness. School holidays, no mum time really, it's, yeah. So they're back and I'm back into my stitching. I don't have any FOs this week because I've made some more starts. Whoopsies. So I'll show you the whips that I've been working on for the last couple, the last two weeks. Um, so I've got my horse full coverage piece, which is my companion piece, um, which I really wasn't keen about starting, but now that I've begun, it's actually... I'm enjoying it. I really like confetti. I think I said that last time. I like the counting and and changing threads. So I'll insert a piece of where I, uh, sorry, I'll certainly picture where I was in my last video here. And now I'll insert a photo of where I'm up to. So I've done one whole strip of a page. So I'm just, at the moment I've, stopped because I can't leave my other whips alone but I've got a nice block there done so I thought I'd leave that for a little while. So this is where I'm up to with this one. And this is what it'll look like when it's finished. It might take a while. So we're getting there, it's a start. You could, you've got to start somewhere with it, I guess. It's just going to be a long, a long stitch, that one. But I am enjoying it, surprisingly. I, when I first began it, I thought, oh, this is just, no, I don't want to do a full coverage. But now I'm, I'm pleased I did start it. Now, the other whip that I've been working on is a sail through Caterpillar cross stitch. It's called Adventure Awaits. And every month for six months, a new section of the world map is released. So I'll show you where I was up to last month. So on the 22nd of July, the next section was released. Um, and this, so I've nearly completed it. I haven't done the full whole section, but this is where we're up to. So in there, we've added the Russian doll, the Taj Mahal, the Wall of China, the Yellow Crane Tower, a cherry blossom and some trees. So I've still got a little bit to do there, but nearly finished. So I'm really happy with how that's coming along. It's gonna go on my souvenirs wall with photos from our trips around the world. And how cute is this needle minder? It's a, a little aircraft with the breast cancer awareness flag around it. I actually work for an airline, so it was one of our promotional um, pins, which I got my husband to cut off the pin bit and make into a needle minder. Perfect for this sale, I just love it. So looking forward to the next release on the 22nd of August. You can still join in if you want to. I'll link um, the f Facebook site down below so you can go and check it out. And if, it's ta if it takes your liking, join in. It's lots of fun. There's a Facebook group where people are sharing their progress. It's a lot of fun. My first sale, so I didn't really know what to expect, but I'm, I'm loving the motifs. I must admit, it's a lot of fun. Now, last video, I mentioned that I had fallen across Cloud Street Factory website and I thought and I was I was in trouble. A lot of a lot of fun fun stitches on there, quick, portable, awesome little stitches to take around with you and as build them as big as you like or as small as you like. So I downloaded a few, got myself sorted, um, did did one character. And while I was stitching away, I'm like, oh, I wonder where I'm going to put this one in my craft room. And in my craft room, I've got lots of 
lots of mem memorabilia framed of things that I've done and, and been and things that I love. And one of those things are all my concert tickets. I'm a little bit of a concert junkie. I love my concerts. Um, so I've got, I keep all my tickets and I've framed them all, or my husband's framed them all for me in one big long strip. And that sort of got me thinking and I thought, hmm, I could actually add to this concert ticket piece with, now it might sound a little bit crazy, with little cross stitch motifs of the artists. So I thought, I'm gonna have to draw these up myself and, and grid them and see what they look like. So I did my first one, which, and I'm gonna do them in chronological order too. So I'm gonna, I've done it on my, um, my hand dyed fabric that I showed you last week, and I'm loving it. Concert, bright colors, it just fits so well. So the first one I've done, so I'm a bit nervous about showing this because it's, yeah, it's everything, the fabric, the, the design, everything. Well, it's inspired by Cloud's factory, so it's very similar in their, in their motifs. So the first one I've done from way back in 2001, my very first concert, is Kylie Minogue. So this is Kylie. Now I'm gonna be trying to do iconic, if it's gonna focus for me, iconic outfits of those artists that are iconic to me. So something that goes, as soon as I see that outfit, I'm like, yeah, that's Kylie. So for, if, for Kylie Minogue fans, you'll know this particular outfit from, you've gotta be searching way back when, in the olden days. <laughs> um, so the next one, I haven't revealed the next one because I thought I might have a little play with this and I've got a little prize for you as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna insert a photo. Ooh, not, I can't show you the whole piece because it'll reveal too much. So I'm gonna show you a photo of the next artist that I've done. And I wonder if you can guess who it is. So I'll insert that here now. Do you think you might know who that is? I'm not going to give too many clues away. I think I think you'll all you'll guess that pretty quickly. So what I'll get you to do, rather than comment below so other people can see what your guess is, if you go over to my Instagram page, Patchy Pony Stitcher, and private message me who you think it is, and I'll let you know if you're correct or you're not. And next week I'll and next video I'll reveal who it is. So you must get your guesses in to me before I do the next video. And what will happen is then the next week I'll release, I'll show you the next character, the next artist, and then the next artist again. And once I'm done, whoever gets the most right, I'm gonna give you a $25 Clouds Factory voucher. So it can, you can, from anywhere in the world, it doesn't matter where you are, because these are digital gift vouchers that I can email you and you can go along to Cloud Street and spend, spend that. So there's a couple of rules because I don't wanna spoil it for people that are playing along. So please don't comment who you think the artist is in the comments below because that will ruin it for other people playing. On my, you obviously need to come along to Instagram on Patchy Pony Stitcher so you can private message me. And so I'll let you know, if, if you miss a, um, a artist, don't despair because you can still keep, there's still an opportunity to win. Not everyone's probably gonna get every single artist right. So I've been really excited. I've done five so far. So, and I'm actually really enjoying the charting of these characters and using different, um, I'm actually going to call it my sampler of my firsts. So with this particular one of Kylie, there's a couple of firsts in here. My first hand dyed fabric, my very first concert that I went to, my first chartered design. So there's going to be quite a few firsts that come along in this with threads, stitching styles, um, different things that I'm going to pop into it. So stay tuned. I'm 
having so much fun with that. It's so much, it, yeah, really enjoying it. And it's also my first giveaway. So another first. Right. Now, I showed you in my very first video an FFO, one of my first finished pieces. So the reason I'm gonna show it, I'll just quickly show it to you again in case you hadn't seen my first video. So this is a line of teddies. Sorry for the glare. So this piece is, I finished this ages ago when my, my 16 year old son was a baby. So that went into his nursery. So it's an old chart. But at the time when I showed you, I didn't have the pattern and I, don't, I didn't know what it was called. I knew it was Joan Elliott, but that was all. And I didn't have the chart. Well, I came across the chart. So rather than me keep it or hold on to it, I'm gonna pass the stash. So if you would like to um, stitch on the line of teddies, I can't show you any more than that. It do doesn't come with a picture. It's just purely um, an original chart. I don't think it's got a copyright date on it. Not that I can see. So if you would like to stitch on the line at Teddy's by Joan Elliott, comment below. I'm happy to post this to anywhere in the world. Now the, the finish that I showed you is actually two teddy bears short. So there's actually seven teddies on the line. My son was really due and I had to have that on the wall before he was born. So I cut it, cut it short just so I could have it completed. Otherwise it probably would never have got done. So if you'd like to stitch that, please comment below. I'm happy to pass the stash on anything once I've finished with a chart. I, I'm not gonna keep it. I'm not probably not gonna um, re, re stitch ones that I've already done. So I'm more than happy to share the love. So if you'd like that one, let me know and I'm happy to pass that along. Um, now, haul. I'm, uh, I've got so uh, quite a bit of stash already, um, so I, I don't really buy a lot, but I have bought a few things since I've seen you last, which is <laughs> it's a bit exciting. I do like getting mail, it's lots of fun. So my first purchase, and these were, um, I think, yeah, Bendy Stitchy showed these on hers on her video a little while ago. It did take a little while for these to come to me because they came from Indonesia, but they are super cute. So these are some handmade clay dried needle minders. So the first one I've got is a little farmer strawberry girl. Now I'll just see if I can get that to focus. There we go. So she's super cute, little farmer strawberry. The second one I got is a unicorn. Gosh, I'm not very steady, am I? So while I thought, oh, well, it's international shipping, I might as well make the most of it. My next one is, I like this one because she reminds me of a little Irish girl and my mum's Irish, so. Now, it's not focusing, sorry guys. And the other one, next one I got, again, another little unicorn. Super cute. So it means I'm going to have to have more whips just so I can put my needle minders on some projects. This one's really cute. Really small, but still very cute. A little Tinkerbell. And the last one I got was a little rainbow coloured uh, girl character. Yeah. So I got these guys. Now to be able to purchase them, you need to go onto her Instagram um, page. It's the House of Meng. I will link it below. They're quite, they're very reasonably priced. Postage wasn't all that dear. But of course, if you're gonna do it, you might as well get a few, hey. <laughs> so I've, um, my first purchase of needle minders. So I, when I first started stitching, I didn't even like, well, no, when I began, when I came back into stitching, I didn't even know what a mean needle minder was. And I got one um, in a package that I had purchased from JK Cross Stitch Supplies here in Australia. And yeah, sold. You have to have a needle minder. I can't, I can't live without them now. They're just so handy. So they're my needle minders. Um, so another bit of haul I got for my sampler of the firsts. I've got a artist that is wearing leather pants. So I need, I wanted something a little bit shiny. Um, so I got 
uh, some nylon DMC. And you can see it's, and I'll, oh, it's not gonna focus, is it? There we go. And um, so I was talking to the lady in the, in the stitching shop and she advised that it's, this one's actually coated in plastic, so that's what gives it the sheen. So I haven't stitched with it yet, another first, to add to the sampler. So it'll be interesting. So if anyone's stitched with this sort of stuff before and you've got any tips or tricks, please let me know. Because I've stitched with, I also stitched with the silver DMC, which was a nightmare. Didn't like it. And then I've done some Krennic as well, which is much, much easier. So if anyone's stitched with this sort of, so it's called, so it's eight millimeter Moulin DMC. But it's got, an, like, it's, an, it's not your typical cotton. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. Uh, my next bit of haul, as I've told you before, I've only, sti I've only stitched on Ada. And I've been really keen to try some even weave. Haven't really wanted to, and I've gone to my local LNS, but they didn't have any. They only had Ada or linen. And I'm not keen to try linen before I've tried even weave. So I think it was Tess at Tess's Stitches who had purchased some fabric off Sew It All Australia. And I thought, oh, I'll jump on their website because I really didn't want to buy a big piece before I knew if I was going to like it. And Sew It All Australia, and I'll link their website below. Sew It All Australia, you can buy off cuts and little pieces. And they just had a miscellaneous pack. I think it was like $12 and I got all these pieces of, um, of even weave fabric. So they're only going to be for smalls and, and little projects, so just little pieces. But interestingly enough, some of them are coloured, which I was expecting because it did say it would have some whites and creams and the rest would be coloured. However, it's not, it's, it's printed colour. So that's an apricot, but on the back it's white. So I didn't know that, um, yeah, I don't know how that's gonna go. So there's, I got some, oh, and there was a piece of linen in it. I also got a piece of purple linen, which is back and front. Gosh, that looks white in there, from there, but it's actually mauve. Okay. And another piece of linen. So I got 10 pieces in total, all just little squares, but enough for me to have a play around with. So this one's green. Maybe I'll hold it. So this one's green, but then white on the other side, which I thought was interesting. So has anyone stitched on printed even weave before? It, it frays really quickly though. I'll have to fix that before I start playing with it. So I've got a few different colors to have a play with to do some small, some more motifs, and we'll see how that goes. And then if it goes well, because I need to just decide what sort of fabric I'm going to be using for my Hawk Run Hello cell. Um, so if I like the even weave, I might do my first bigger project on the even weave as well. So I need to get onto that so I can order because that begins in October. Um, my next bit of haul was from D Stash online. On uh, now this is an Australian D Stash um, from the girls around Australia. So my first one was called Filgrim in my garden there is, which I thought was really cute. Let's see if I can. Sorry guys. Got lots of little again a few motifs i can add a few more in or take some out that i don't want to have in there so that's a nice little pattern so i grabbed that one and i also grabbed love thy thread and it is called christmas christmas tree now this one so it's just sort of motif style but when it came i probably should have looked at it a bit closer it's so it's 20 centimetres by 25 centimetres. So it's still quite quite a reasonable size tree. I thought it was just like a little motify style one. So more projects in the pipeline there. Now my next, so my next bit of haul, now this is silly, this one, it really is, but I couldn't leave it there. I just couldn't. I walked, I put it back on the shelf, I walked away, I walked around. No, I said to myself, I can't, I can't leave that behind. Um, so because we're in Melbourne, I'm not a Victorian, I'm from Tasmania, so we went over to Victoria over the weekend 
and went into a, a little cross stitch store there. Well, actually it was more of a crafter store because I had lots of quilting and wool and, and yarn as there, but they did have a little section for cross stitch. Now you're gonna think this is really daggy, but I think it's super cute. It's a thread organizer in the shape of a horse's head. How can I leave that there? My husband's like, seriously? I'm like, mm-hmm. You're like, he's lucky I didn't want five because I had five there, I did count. <laughs> but really cute. So I'm gonna use that in my Hawker and Hello Sal. So keeping that the best. <laughs> Um, now my next bit of haul, now while we're in Melbourne, we went, I went into a shop called Typo, I'm not sure if you guys, it's a stationery shop, um, you might have it in America, I'm not sure, and they had these for a couple of bucks, now this is a laptop bag, so for five bucks, it's got sort of a fluffy lining on the inside, I was like, oh, I can't leave that behind either for that price. Because I've taken my project, um, the one that Taryn made me, and I don't like taking it out because I'm worried it might get dirty. <laughs> so I thought, well, these little um, laptop bags are perfect for that. And I also saw this little, uh, this is a pencil case, but I couldn't leave this behind either. Things that I can't live without. So I guess it might be more like a makeup bag or something, but I'm like, stitchy stuff I can't live without. Going in there. And that will go well with my unicorn um, bag that Taryn made me anyway. So, I was, uh, and that was like $2. Can't leave those behind. Okay, so I've got, or actually no, I need some advice. So over the weekend, so today's Thursday, so a week ago I went to a concert. Um, Pink's currently touring in Australia. I'm going to insert a little video here because she's just amazing. Super cool, and we were super close. So I've, that's my fifth concert I've seen of her. She's pretty top stuff and my husband and I were um, very, very close and he snagged me because the drummer threw these into the crowd. That's how close we were. He snagged me a drumstick and it's actually got the beautiful Trauma Pink Tour on it. So I want to incorporate this somehow into my finish with my first sampler. Any ideas? Because it, it's bulky, it's, you know, it's quite thick, so it's not gonna go inside a frame. I, I don't know what to do with it. I can't just leave it sitting on a shelf. I've got tickets, so I don't necessarily have to frame it with the stitching, because I could frame it with the tickets and also the wristbands that we got. Um, yeah, but any ideas would be super helpful because it's a pretty, pretty cool um, souvenir that I don't want it just sitting in a drawer and, oh, then, you know, 10 years down the track, yeah, oh, I'll toss that out because uh, it was an awesome concert, one of the best ones I've ever been to. So that's me pretty much done for this video. So I really want to say thank you to all the people returning. The support on these floss tubes are fantastic. The people in the community are amazing. I've, you know, I've, I feel like I've met some of these people and I know you and I know we've only been messaging, you know, here and there a couple of times, but I can't wait to meet some of you for real, whether it's at a retreat or on a trip to America, maybe. Good excuse to go. I know I'm pretty keen to sort of think about going to StitchCon next year if I can get a place. That would be super cool. As I said, I work for an airline, so any excuse is a good excuse. <laughs> So, and any and new subscribers, welcome. And if, you, if you'd like to return, just hit the subscribe button and the little bell. And before I sign off, I'm gonna insert a little video afterwards of our bees. Um, even though it's winter, we're having a mild winter, which is fantastic for once, because here in Tassie, we get usually get a lot of frost and a lot of snow, and the bees just 
you don't hear see them they sort of hide in their hives for a while so we've had a few sunny days and they came out and they were swarming or well not swarming they were indulging in the lavender not the lavender now yeah, oh, come on they were indulging in the rosemary flowers we've got a quite a big rosemary bush and they were just loving it. They were sunning themselves and collecting nectar and the sound of them buzzing was so loud when we were outside. So I'm gonna insert a little video here of our, our little bees, our little ladies. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you next time. It might be a little while before I'm back because we're actually heading, um, we're going on a holiday um, in a well, next week and I won't be back for two weeks after that so I might not be back for a month or so I'm hoping to get some stitching done while I'm away um, but we'll see how we go I don't know for how much time I'm gonna get um, to do that but I'll certainly be taking it with me all right talk to you next time guys bye